Uh, hello again, this is David, and we're going to continue on with card removal right now. I'm going to use the blackjack game to demonstrate the effect of removal, which we call essentially blockers in poker. Now in blackjack, uh, we have a dealer and we have a player. Uh, the player is dealt two cards. We're going to give him a six and say a five. And the dealer gets two cards. We're going to give him an ace. And he has an up card and he has a whole card, which you don't see. You see one, you don't see the other. Now, when the dealer has an ace up, before play continues, the dealer checks to see if he has blackjack. He has blackjack if he has a 10 valued card. That includes not only the tens, the four tens, but also the jacks, queens, and kings. All of these cards are worth 10 in blackjack. And if he has one of those cards underneath, the ace, he wins your money and the play does not continue. However, when the dealer has an ace up, he offers you a side bet. It's called insurance. And insurance pays two to one. We're going to say that in this case, the player has the option of making a $5 insurance bet. And if he wins the bet, he the bet if the dealer has blackjack, it returns $10 plus the original wager. So uh, he gets paid two to one. Now, in this game right here, uh, the dealer can be said to be bluffing when he has a blackjack and not bluffing when he does not have a blackjack because he wins the bet, the side bet, if he does not have blackjack. Okay, so any card in the deck that is not a 10 valued card is essentially a value bet for him, whereas a 10 underneath would essentially be a bluff. Uh, because he wants you to take it. Now this is not too dissimilar uh, from this one part co poker game that we did in the first couple of videos. If you remember, one player is dealt either a queen or a ten, the other player is dealt a jack, the high card wins. This player has the option of making a two dollar bet and this player has the option of calling or folding. Now, when this player makes the two dollar bet the pot size bet, he's offering the opponent two to one. So he must have at least value bets for each bluff, or else his opponent would win simply by calling every time. Okay, now this is essentially the very same thing here. Okay, we start that we start uh, before we, we deal any cards. What we have over here is a 52 deck, 52 card deck of cards. Okay, now. The player gets his two cards. Now there are 50 cards remaining. The dealer gets his card. There are now 49 cards remaining. Okay, there are 49 unseen cards. One of these unseen cards is going underneath the ace. Okay, now, the question is, is this a good bet for the player to take? He's getting two to one. Well, we see the population of unseen cards is 49. The number of 10 valued cards, the kings, queens, jacks, and tens, is 16. The number of non-10 valued cards, 33, because 33 and 16 is 49. So the ratio of non-10s to 10s is 2.1. The dealer has more than two value cards for each bluff card. Okay, so there's no way the player can win uh, by playing. If, if the dealer was, was essentially bluffing more often, if he didn't have enough value bets uh, to balance off his bluffs, then the player would win. Now, some, we're going to say this is a single deck game. Sometimes before they deal, they, they burn one card. You usually don't get to see what that card is. But suppose they burned a card and say you got a peek at it. He put this in the discard tray and that was the four of clubs. So you already know that this four of clubs is out there. Now we deal. So you get your six and your five, he gets the ace. And he says insurance. Well, before we had a population of 49 unseen cards, but now we've seen this four that's come out of the deck. So now we have only 48 unseen cards. 16 of these are 10. Now only 32 of them are non-10s because the four of clubs is out of the deck. Now the ratio of non-tens to tens is exactly two to one against. 
Okay, so this is still not a winning bet for the player, but it's a break-even bet. Okay, uh, if he places the five dollars here, he will win one third of the time. The dealer will win two thirds of the time, but the player gets two to one. They break even. Now suppose there's a second player at the table. Okay, and you're not supposed to see cards that dealt face down, but suppose you see them. Okay, uh, he has a jack and a seven, and he lets you see his cards. Well, now the unseen cards are not 48 anymore. Now they're 46. Okay, the number of non ten, the number of ten value cards. There's not 16 of them left because he has a 10 value card. So that's 15. And the number of non tens goes down to 31 because he has a 7. Okay, we see right here that insurance is still not a good bet, so you'll decline. Uh, there's going to be 2.1 a non 10 cards to each 10 value card. Suppose, however, this were not a jack. Suppose this were a, an, an 8. Now it changes things. Now there are still 16 10 value cards in the deck, but how many non 10s are available? Okay. We see now there are only 30 non-10 cards available. There's still 16 10 value cards, but now the ratio of non-10s to 10s is only 1.9 to 1. Now it's a profitable bet. This is the effect of removal. Okay, it has altered the, the makeup of the deck, and it has made that a profitable bet. Now, let's turn to a, uh, a poker example. What we're going to look at right now is a simple comparison of two hands. Ace-King versus Jack-Jack. Now when we talk about ranges in the value portion of our range, you often hear us say we're talking about the value portion of range being uh, pocket queens are better or Ace-King. And that confuses some people. They think, well, what about Jacks? Isn't Jacks better than Ace-King? Um, and the answer is, Jax is be better than a king only in a head-to-head -head confrontation. And that's the only time. If we put in poker stove right here, here we have ace-king. And here we have jack-jack. And we compare them. We see that jack-jack has 50% equity. It's a favorite uh, against ace-king. But... Suppose we were going to compare them not to each other, but to an arbitrary uh, third distribution. Say this player has a value range of pocket queens are better and ace-king. Well, first let's look at how pocket jacks stands up. Pocket jacks has 36% equity when matched up against this value range. We change this to ace-king. Ace-king has 39.6% equity. Okay, uh, ace-king has a better chance against this value range than does pocket jacks, or than do pocket jacks. Now, people may wonder about that. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one of them is of course, they're both smashed if they're against pocket aces. But if the opponent has pocket kings, the the ace king has three outs, where the pocket jacks only has two. And if the opponent has pocket queens, ace king has six outs, where pocket jacks uh, has only two. So that's one of the reasons, but that's not the chief reason. I'm going to show you the main reason. The main reason has to do with the effect of removal. Okay? Now, you have an opponent with a range. 
Now, in your opponent's value range, the two most powerful hands in, his, in their value range are pocket aces, with six combinations, and pocket kings, which there are also six combinations. Now, let's say we have jacks. Okay, in the villain's range, uh, we have a distribution of hands that come from all of these remaining cards that we see over here. And that includes all 50 cards that we do not hold. Now, within these, there are going to be six combinations of pocket aces and six combinations of pocket kings. Because you see the aces right here can be, uh, you know, clubs, diamonds, clubs, hearts, Club spades, diamonds, hearts, diamond spades, or heart spades. Six combinations. Same thing here. Okay. Now suppose we don't have pocket jacks. We instead we have ace king. Now we're looking at our next range. We're in a lot better shape than pocket jacks were was. Okay, and the main reason is not because we have more outs from behind, although that's one of the reasons. The reason is, is that pocket that ace king has only half the chance of being against pocket aces or kings than pocket jacks does, because now pocket aces only has three possible combinations, and pocket kings only has three combinations. We have an ace and we have a king, so pocket aces, the remaining aces up here, we have. Club diamonds, club spades, and diamond spades. That's three combinations. And then we have three combina possible combinations of kings. Diamonds, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and clubs, hearts. So uh, when you're looking at ace-king compared to pocket jacks and wondering whether to call a shove or whether to make a bluff, remember that pocket jacks has twice the chance of running into pocket aces or kings than ace-king does. This is what gives ace-king some of its unique qualities. When you make a great big bluff, you know that you only have half the chance of running into a premium hand, aces or kings, as pocket jacks or pocket queens or pocket tens do. Because although those are stronger hands than ace-king in a head-to-head -head confrontation, they are not better hands than ace-king when matched up against a range of hands. Okay. Uh, Ace-King is ahead of any non-pair, and against any pair, other than aces or kings, it has a large number of outs to improve. Okay, uh, when we put together our three-betting range, which is intended to attack uh, the initial raiser's range, we're going to have premium hands in our range, but we're also going to have bluffs. And the cards that we're going to be using to bluff are going to have contain either an ace or a king in almost all cases, and what that's going to do, it's going to disrupt our opponent's initial range. He's not going to be calling with the same frequency that he thinks he is. And uh, we'll get back into that in the next video. I'm not sure how much time I've used, but uh, if I've used 10 minutes, I'll end this one now. If not, I'll just uh, proceed right into the next one.